what is up? In this video, I'll be showing you how to build stone walls, towers, and gatehouses, along with a basic design for medieval structures so that you can build your very own medieval city. First up is our city walls. We're going to start this build off with arena foundations. Continue stacking the foundations to a height that you like. From here, we're going to be placing arena door frames on the exterior portion of the wall, followed up with another layer of foundations. We're then going to place crenellations on top of the door frames to complete the wall. Now on to city towers. You'll start off with the base by connecting a square foundation to the wall, then you'll alternate between wedge and square foundations to form a circle. You'll then stack your foundations to the same height as your wall. Now keep in mind it is important that the square foundation of the tower is connected with the wall instead of a wedge foundation. From here we'll be placing the arena wedge ceiling pieces to complete the floor and then connecting door frames on top of the foundations. And once that's done, place another door frame here followed up with more foundations. We'll cap this off with an arena ceiling. We're then going to add a layer of arena windows. And then be placing our stairs on the inside of the tower. Once that's placed, add a ring of struts on the inside of the tower. We're then going to add our ceiling by using arena ceiling and wedge ceiling pieces. Don't forget to add your hatch frame and ladder as well. And to complete the tower, we're going to be adding our crenellations on top of the window frames. And then to add stairs onto your wall, you'll be placing arena foundations and then placing arena stairs on top of those. Now back to the walls. If you accidentally connect your wall to a wedge portion of the tower, don't worry. Just add a couple of wedge foundations here to connect them with the square foundation of the tower. Moving on to covered wall defenses. If you're building castle walls, you can also use the arena wedge foundations as well. The trick is to connect your wedge wall foundations to the wedge tower foundation. And then we're gonna stack more foundations on top of those. We're then going to be placing our arena doors, followed up with another row of wedge foundations. And now from here, we're going to be placing insulated wood ceiling pieces all the way across to connect the two towers. Once those are placed, we'll be connecting decorative struts to the underneath of the insulated ceilings. From here, we'll be connecting window pieces to the exterior facing portion of our insulated ceiling pieces. And then struts to the other side of our insulated ceiling pieces. We're just going to replace these windows with walls. 
and then add a layer of single roof pieces all the way across. Now with this wall, you can still attach stairs to the back side of it as shown using the same steps from earlier. And that's that for covered wall defenses. Up next is our gatehouse. This can be built by connecting three arena foundations in between two round towers shown earlier in the video. We'll be connecting arena gateways to both sides of the foundations. From here, we'll be placing arena ceilings to the top of the gateway, followed up with arena door frames. We'll then be adding more arena foundations on top of the ceiling pieces. You can replace these window pieces with door frames, but that's optional. And we'll be finishing the top portion of the gatehouse by placing our crenellations. At the bottom of the gatehouse, we'll be adding some wedge foundations and then connecting stairs to them on both sides of our build. We'll then follow up by placing our doors. And last but not least, we'll spice up our build by adding a couple of banners. And moving on to medieval structures, we're going to be starting this build off by placing our arena foundations. For this particular build, the base will be 3 by 5 Once the foundations are placed, we'll be connecting stable fence foundations to the outside base of our build. We will then be placing an arena door frame along with arena walls for the first floor of our structure. And don't forget the stairs leading up to our door. Moving on to the second floor, I like to use the Yamatai building palette. Uh, I will first add my window frames in random spots, filling in the remainder of the gaps with walls. If you noticed, I like to invert these pieces where the interior side is facing outwards. Now from here, we need to figure out how we want our roof to look. For this particular build, we will make a standard roof with no valleys. And the pieces I use for the roof are from the Catan building palette. And that pretty much completes the outside portion of our medieval structure. Now believe it or not, this build would actually work if you were planning on building a decently large town or city and you needed something to fill a smaller tight space from within. But over here at Barden Builds, we're going to be extra. So extra. Like with all my builds, we're going to start off by placing our foundations. In this instance, the layout is going to be completely random to show you that there is a million ways to design your medieval structures for your very own city build. Something I keep in mind is what the building is actually going to be used for. For example, a tavern, guild hall, medieval shops, houses, or whatever else you can come up with. So get creative and experiment with some designs.
Now that the layout is finished, we'll be going around the base with stable fence foundations. We're then going to be adding our appropriate walls and windows. Something I do for towers uh, is sometimes I'll extend the arena walls upwards a couple of floors before switching over to the Yamatai building pallet. For this build, you'll notice there will be two towers, one of which will be modified, uh, will be a modified version and the other will be the standard layout. Now something unique you can do to your build is to include a bridge linking both structures. To do this, simply connect them with insulated ceiling pieces on the second floor and then place decorative struts underneath. I think now is a good time to add our floors inside of our building. Now, when placing our floors, have an idea of where you want the stair placement. We're then going to be placing struts where walls would usually come together so that once we start working on the roof, we're able to place our slanted wall pieces.
And now that all of those are placed, we're ready for our roof pieces. Now the layout almost looks good. Something I like to include is another bridge linking another structure. This time, the bridge is going to be only one ceiling piece wide. I will attach stairs to the foundations that the bridge will cover. And let's not forget about our fence foundations. And the arena walls as well. And now from here, we'll be placing struts to the foundation the bridge will cover. We will then be placing our insulated wood floors and then complete the rest of the exterior using the same design pattern. Now another important step of your build is to figure out where you want your doors. Once you got your doors placed, there's a lot of ways you can make them accessible. One way is just by simply adding stairs. Another way is to build a porch followed by stairs. To build a porch, I'll use the insulated wood ceiling pieces and connect struts underneath them so they appear to be supporting the porch. I will then connect my stairs and then place my stable fence walls or lattice half walls to act as railings. And while I'm thinking about it, let's add our doors. Now before finishing a medieval structure, I will circle the build to see if there's any spot that may appear to be plain. Uh, if there is, I might add some awnings. Thank you. 
and that will complete the exterior portion of the build. For more information about interiors, I plan on making an interior tutorial in the near future. Now on to city streets. Uh, to build these, we'll start off with the roadways, which I use pathways and wooden fence pieces. I'll scatter the pathways and then follow up with the fences to form a more natural looking roadway. If you got terrain that looks like a pathway, don't be afraid to use that as well. If you have a more open area in your city, try experimenting with statues or fountains. In this instance, I'm going to be placing a statue, first by placing an arena wedge foundation, uh, followed up with stable fence foundations and arena fences. Uh, last but not least, I'll actually be placing my statue in the center of those foundations. And that pretty much does it for city streets. Last up in this tutorial is city layout. Before you build anything, I normally come up with a list on what my city will include. From there, I will normally make a quick sketch of the entire city to get an idea of the basic layout. For the first part of my sketch, I'll include the unique buildings. In this build, I've included the Colosseum or Pit Fight Arena and the House of Worship that were both shown in previous videos. I will then come up with a basic design for my city walls, also noting locations for gatehouses and towers. This will help when it comes time to planning the layout of my buildings inside the city. Next I will come up with a basic layout for where the rest of the structures inside the city will be. For this build, I have included a couple of buildings that I did tutorials on in previous videos. Let me know if you can spot them during the showcase. Something to keep in mind when designing your city is the structures located outside your city walls. In this build, I have only included a small castle because I have other tutorials in the works for frontier style buildings. Once my sketch is done, I will go back through and make sure my city has adequate roadways, correcting issues if I notice anything. Uh, pro tip, when you start to actually build your city, start out by placing your foundations first, using low tier foundations if you're playing in survival. This will help with resource management if you run into any issues. The last thing your city needs is a name. For this video, I've gone with one that I've used in one of my D&D campaigns, Loreacre. With all of that said, I believe it is time for you to get out there and start building. I'll end this video with the finished build of my design.